Hello again YouTube and welcome back to Just Get A Tesla. Today we're going to talk about autopilot and autonomous driving in general. First of all, how does it work? How do all of the bits on my Tesla Model Y actually make this thing possible? And then secondly, do we really want it? The way that Tesla enable its computers to be able to drive the car is through a whole suite of cameras dotted all around the vehicle. Now, most cars have got a camera on the back for reversing and Tesla is no exception. But then when you go around to the side, there's actually two cameras. So there's one here in the B pillar, which is facing forwards. And there's another one down here in the indicator pod, which is facing backwards. So as this car is driving along, it can see vehicles that are in the lane uh, next to it. It can see parked cars. It will show you wheelie bins, pedestrians, uh, traffic cones, whatever else is around you. And of course, it will be able to track all of the traffic that is filtering behind you. That's very useful when you're in traffic and the screen gives you a visual representation of those vehicles as you're going around. The other thing, of course, the car needs to be able to do is to see forwards. Now here, I'm parked up at New Aberdour Beach. So if I went any further forward, I'd be in the North Sea. But if I was in traffic, the car needs to see further forward. And that is why there are a suite of three cameras up here. Nano angle, standard angle, wide angle. So each of those has a different field of vision. Each of those has a different length of focus. And that enables it to be able to see quite a long way ahead. So it's not just looking at the car or the truck in front, it's seeing past that into the cars and the traffic that's ahead of you. What that means is that while you're sat in the driver's seat behind the steering wheel, your eyeballs are only looking forward towards the North Sea thinking, I hope I don't go into it. The car is able to see everything that is around it, to the side of it, behind it, and make decisions based on what it's seeing. So how does autopilot work in practice in the UK? So remember, I have got the standard free most restricted version of autopilot but the car is still controlling both speed using um, throttle and regenerative braking and disc brakes if needed it is controlling the steering so it is going around this bend all by itself without me having to actually do anything or turn the steering wheel and it will respond to road signs so if the speed limit changes it will change the amount of speed that the uh, car is willing to do um, it does have a little bit more of a restricted functionality in terms of how it reads the road. So despite having all of these cameras, it reads the road actually quite late on this basic tier of autopilot that I've got when it comes to things like bends. So I've restricted the speed to 55 because I know that that is a very comfortable speed to go around all of these bends. Some of them at 60, get a little bit leery when the car doesn't read them quite as early as my Mark 1 eyeball can do. But other than that, I basically just sit here. The car is doing the driving. Every now and then it flashes up blue on the screen saying you need to still have your hand on the steering wheel. Um, but other than that, I can sit here and I can relax. It is an extremely relaxed way to drive, especially on longer trips. And the point about autopilot is this is not really the environment that it's best at. If you're on a motorway or a fast dual carriageway, something like that, with lots of traffic around you, autopilot is absolutely fantastic because it can see more than your eyes can see. Because I've got two eyes pointing forwards with a peripheral field of vision um, off to the side. The car, if you remember from the walk around, has got three cameras at the front with different fields of vision. It has got two cameras on the side facing forwards, two other cameras on the side facing backwards, and a camera on the rear. It uses all of those to process through the computer and tell it where it is and where it needs to be going. What's more, if you set a route on navigation, then if you have the slightly more advanced levels of autopilot, which of course you have to pay for, 
thanks Elon um, but they will do things like navigate on autopilot so you can drive along the motorway and it will take you um, from one junction to another it will change lanes for you you have to tell it that you accept the lane changes proposing but it will indicate and steer and cancel the indication all by itself and off you go so it's an extremely reliable and relatively safe way to travel using the more basic versions of it but let's just talk for a moment about full self-driving because it's even called full self-driving brackets beta and the reason why it's beta is that Tesla are still developing the neural AI which will make the system work Elon Musk is always talking about the fact that you are going to be able to have your car literally drive itself with the driver paying no attention at all or better still no driver and it becomes a robo taxi where your car is able to earn you money whilst you're not using it that is a long long way away and they are still developing the AI which will enable the machine to be able to navigate around and one thing that it's already not good at are city streets where the obstacles are coming at it thick and fast or they're a little bit more unpredictable as people and parked cars and potholes often are and where there are just more things that it can't necessarily predict so the beta testing that all of the Tesla drivers who have full self-driving are doing is literally teaching the machine how to drive now I actually think that's quite cool but in the UK I'd have to pay six and a half thousand quid for the privilege of helping Tesla develop the product that I've just paid for which is an interesting business model we should also talk about the legislative elephant in the room which is the UNECE regulations um, this is the United Nations Commission for basically yeah, the economies of Europe and it restricts autonomous vehicles it's not that it's against them it's that what it's concerned about is what happens if your robot driving Tesla mows down a child on the street and kills them who is responsible is the driver responsible is the car responsible is the AI responsible because at the moment if I drive like a Burke and I kill somebody it's fairly clear it's my fault I am the person who is in charge of the car with my hands on the steering wheel and my feet on the pedals but once you get to the higher levels of autonomy of autonomous driving up to level 4 and then level 5 you know in level 5 you don't need controls at all you don't need a steering wheel or pedals you literally sit there in a completely automated pod I don't think we're ever going to get there just because they won't allow it but level four where I could sit here and read a book while the car drives through town towards the you know child that I've said it might run over that legally would be permitted that it from a technological perspective would be permitted so would I be responsible for the death of the child if I'm not legally driving because the car is so then you're into well is the company responsible and there's already been a few headlines where people talk about oh look Tesla autopilot has, has killed somebody in this crash here and usually when they look at them they find that it's the person driving that's been the issue rather than the car but what if it was the car you can't put an AI <laughs> this neural AI that everybody is developing can't be put on trial for accidentally killing a child because of the way that it's driving so it just doesn't work and that's a bit of a problem until we can get the legislative regulations and the frameworks and the understandings sorted out this is never going to work so what do all of these cameras and the computer and the neural ai that they're building what does all of this mean well from a practical perspective what it means is that tesla is building very 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 safe vehicles so from a structural perspective this car behind me is rated the safest in the world as in it has topped the charts in both europe and american crash tests and we had a very visual representation of that recently when some nutter in california decided he wanted to kill himself and his family and drove his model y off a big cliff everyone survived so 
The shell of the vehicle is strong, but the computer, the brain that's using its cameras to be able to look all around it and react to it is also very clever. So this has got autonomous emergency braking. I said to you that I am in front of the sea and I am. So if I try to drive any further forward with the rail, the car would stop me. And not only would it stop me if it was moving, but if I actually sat here and tried to hit the throttle to make the thing go, it would also stop me. It has got a system where it prevents you from driving into something. Now, of course, it's not going to be flawless because these systems never are, but that is something where the three cameras up here on the pod really are offering something special, which is idiot mode. You know, this is a car that will do its absolute damnedest to stop you killing somebody or killing yourself or running over little furry animals. Is autonomous vehicles going to become a mass market thing where pretty much every car and every truck and every bus drives itself? Honestly, I think we're a long, long way away from that. The potential is there, the technology is there, and certainly they are developing the computer guidance that is going to be needed. But there is a huge issue around regulation. Do people want to let their cars drive themselves? And it's just what happens when it goes wrong that they're concerned about. Let's be very clear. It'll go wrong a lot less with autonomy than it will with human frailty. Because for every time you see something in the press where there's a, oh look, autopilot has gone mad and somebody has crashed. Think how many human crashes there have been since you last saw a story about the autonomous car crashing because let's be honest humans are idiots we aren't very good at doing complex things and that's why there are so many crashes and that's why there's so many people dying on the road so all of these safety systems all of these autonomous features that's a good thing it's protecting us from ourselves so I think it's fab we need as much of this as possible and that's why the idea of Tesla drivers basically being beta testers actually makes sense because we understand the cars and we're quite passionate about it hell if you've spent another six and a half thousand quid and I think it's twelve thousand dollars or something in America for full self-driving because theirs does more but if you've spent that kind of money as well as buying the car you're obviously into it Anyway, that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, all the usual yada, 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 yada. And I will see you very soon on the next one.